Hi, Cole here from the Storytelling with Data team. In the past few episodes, we've taken a peek at other people's books. Today, I thought I'd show you one that I wrote. Let me grab it off the shelf. The book is Storytelling with Data, a data visualization guide for business professionals. Now, it came out in the fall of 2015, uh, which it's actually astounding for me to reflect on everything that's changed in my life over that period of time. Um, my family has grown, the kids are getting bigger. We've relocated our lives from San Francisco where the book was penned to Milwaukee. It's also been amazing to see that since publication, popularity of the book has continued to grow. It's a ubiquitous desktop resource for analysts and others needing to communicate with data across all sorts of different industries. It's used by hundreds of university programs around the world. It has been translated into more than 20 languages. There actually aren't words that adequately describe how that feels. Uh, to think of people around the world reading words that I wrote, uh, it makes me incredibly happy to be able to help others communicate their work effectively. So rewinding, when I started writing the book, I was the one person storytelling with data team traveling all over, teaching workshops at organizations, but I'd maxed out at, when it came to the number of people who I could talk to directly. And so the book really was my way of releasing that constraint uh, and sharing the lessons that I've learned and that I'm learning uh, when it comes to communicating with data more broadly. And so if you'd like to hear more about that backstory and I guess just how storytelling with data has grown as a company over time, we have a podcast entitled How I'm Building This that gets into that. It's actually a really fun one. I recorded it with my husband, Randy. I'll make sure we link to that in the description below. But I think that's enough prelude. Let's take a look at the book. All right, so if we turn to the inside, I'll start with the table of contents. Let's actually spend a little bit of time here. Uh, the book, as I mentioned, really came out of doing workshops. And so for those who are familiar, who've maybe attended a Storytelling with Data workshop or familiar with the content that we teach there, the first few chapters in particular are going to look quite familiar because they follow the same sort of progression as we do in our workshops. Starting off with a chapter on context. So this is really about pausing upfront, thinking about your audience, crafting your message and building your plan of attack before you start putting together your materials. Then in chapter two, the uh, focus switches to data visualization more specifically. Uh, and I share the 12 visuals that I find myself using most or uh, did at that point in time. And actually not much has changed since then in a business setting. We'll take a look specifically at what those are as we flip through the book. Chapter three is all about clutter. So getting comfortable with the visual elements of our communications that might not be adding informative value and get comfortable stripping those unnecessary elements away. Chapter four is all about focusing attention and how you can use really straightforward aspects like color, and size and the position on the page to really draw your audience's attention to where you want to, them to pay it. Right? Wait, make where you want people to look clear and create visual hierarchy that helps ease that process. 
And then actually here's where we uh, diverge a bit from the typical workshop content uh, because the cool thing you get with a book that you don't get with a short four hours or even eight hours or a couple of days is the same sort of time constraint, which means in the book, there is a ton more in terms of examples and insight into the thought process that goes into forming effective communications with data, uh, as well as just additional content uh, compared to what we teach in our workshops. So chapter five, for example, is all about thinking like a designer. So it gets into things like uh, aesthetics and affordances and building acceptance with your audience for your visual designs. Chapter six goes through a series of what I would consider model examples of data visualization, talks about the specific thought process that led to their creation, down to things like, you know, why is the font a certain size or a certain color, all of the nitty gritty. Chapter seven gets into lessons on storytelling and takes a really practical approach to how we can use strategies from story when it comes to our business communications. Uh, chapter eight is pulling it all together. So this takes a real world case study from start to finish, goes through each of these lessons and talks about their application, shows that through example. Chapter nine gets into case studies. These are common challenges faced when communicating with data and some ideas on how to overcome them. And then the final chapter, or final thoughts, there are some uh, thoughts on where to learn more, additional resources, and just ideas on how to integrate what you learn in the book into your day-to-day -day work life. Uh, let's flip through the book. So. Just in the introduction, actually, this gives us a sense of what you'll learn, right? The difference between showing data in a graph and using it to inform. Uh, there's a few examples of before and afters here. So each of these are featured more prominently and with uh, all the interim steps in between as we get into the content. Uh, some prelude here on who the book is written for. And actually, that's one thing that I'll just pause and mention, it, which is that the book does not assume any previous knowledge of tools or techniques. Uh, it's really trying to write to anyone who finds themselves in a scenario where they have some data that they need to communicate to someone else. Right? You've already analyzed it, and now you're trying to figure out how do I communicate what I now know effectively so that others can have that knowledge as well. Let's see, back on the book. Oh, let's flip to chapter two. So I mentioned these are the 12 types of visuals that uh, at this point in time, I found myself using most. I actually went through and categorized the hundreds of graphs and other visuals that I had made over the course of a calendar year and found that they all fell into these 12 categories. Uh, these are the ones that we go through in chapter two. And probably the biggest thing to notice is there's nothing crazy here, right? These are the basics. And that's really the foundation of the book is before you get into more nuanced stuff, get really good at communicating in the way that people are for the most part going to want to be communicated to. So often that means keeping things simple or at least not making them more complicated than they need to be. So chapter two goes through each of those visuals and some use cases and examples. There's also some content on what not to do, right? So avoid 3D that is non-meaningful, avoid secondary Y axes, right? And not only avoid it, but why might you not want to opt for this? And what could you do instead? Uh, let's take a look at an example from chapter four, focus your audience's attention. We're talking specifically about some pre-attentive attributes in graphs, the strategy, right? So we've got our basic graph, then an indication of how we might highlight something within that, tie that to some words at the top. And then we could do another iteration where we go deeper, highlight within that and annotate with text to make things clear. 
I will pause and mention that all of the graphs, all of the data in the book are available for download. Uh, we'll make sure that we put the link for that in the description down below. Uh, oh, here's something that's sort of fun little side story. Uh, so now I'm in chapter five, think like a designer talking about affordances. And there were actually several of these instances where I wanted to use an image or something from a couple of different brands. I remember there was an example of the London tube map. There was another of method uh, dish soap. And then I wanted to use a picture of OXO tools. And I forget which one it was even, but I was having a hard time getting a hold of one of these organizations to try to get to the right person to say, yes, you can use this image. And so at one point it struck me, I don't need to use the image. I can do a quick drawing instead and use that to bring the idea to mind. So there are several of these sketches throughout which is just sort of a fun thing. I'm just gonna flip through now so you can get a sense of examples and just what the book looks like. So there are these sidebars. Here's the sidebar. Uh, using PowerPoint to tell stories, right? Related notes of useful things. Actually, while we're in the story section, I'll pause and just quickly talk about one example that's highlighted here uh, through another one of my amateur sketches. This is the idea of horizontal logic, which is a way to test and see if the story that you're planning is actually coming across well in your content. And the idea is you might start off with an executive summary where each point there is a complete thought. Uh, so if you follow our work at Storytelling with Data, you might be aware of the takeaway title. Uh, so this would be those sorts of takeaway titles where you outline those in, up front, and that would tell your meta story. And then you title each of the subsequent slides in the same order with that takeaway. It's a way of setting expectations up front and then running your audience through the detail and help set up some nice framing that can help you understand if you've got all of the transitions and uh, the story that you've planned is really coming across in your materials in the way that you help them. Let's just flip through here, some more examples, other great stuff. And that takes us to the end. If you might be interested in winning a signed copy of the book in a moment, I'm going to tell you exactly how you can do that. Uh, before that though, I wanna make sure you were aware of something that I am super excited about. My newest book, it's called Storytelling With You. Plan, create, and deliver a stellar presentation. It goes beyond communicating with data specifically, really diving into what you, as the communicator of anything, can do to get people to engage, build materials that will support you, and speak in a way that makes others want to listen and act. You can get sample content of the book at storytellingwithyou.com. It officially publishes on September 27th, 2022. If you're watching this ahead of that, you can pre-order it now to be among the first to receive it. Or if uh, September 2022 has already passed when you're watching this, you can order it now and likely have it in your hands in a number of days. All right, so now what you've been waiting for how to get a chance to win a signed copy of Storytelling with Data. It's very simple. All you need to do is leave a comment about your favorite Storytelling with Data tip, lesson, or resource. This could be something that you read about in a blog post or heard in a podcast. Maybe you saw it in our online Storytelling with Data community, or maybe in a video here on this channel. Leave a comment with your favorite Storytelling with Data tip, lesson, or resource in the next week. That's from the time of posting. And we'll pick three lucky winners to receive a signed copy of the book. Speaking of the book, if you'd like to add storytelling with data to your library with certainty, click on the link that just appeared. I'll also mention that if you really want a signed copy and either that time window has closed or 
you just don't want to leave it to chance. Uh, we do also have signed books as well as book plates. This is a sticker that I sign and send that you can then put into your book available at storytellingwithdata.com slash shop. I invite you to stay tuned for the next episode where we will share another one of my books. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.